Hello again, I am Blunty, and this is MSI's Gaming 2G Factory Overclocked Flavor of the NVIDIA GeForce GTX 960. And yeah, it seems a bit odd doing a review of this card at this stage in its life. I mean, it's hardly the new kid on the block, is it? But the opportunity arose to put one of these through its paces, and considering I've already got some significant real-world hands-on and reviews with every other member of the GTX 900 series family, I figured it'd be silly not to just fill that gap in. Plus, it's also the first time I've had some time with one of MSI's cards, starring their very highly regarded Zero Fruzor cooler design. Apparently it's an excellent cooler, but I gotta tell you, I think that name is dumb. Anyway, I'm super glad I took the time, because MSI's GTX 960 is a very impressive card, both in terms of performance and in the specific features and capabilities of MSI's particular flavour. Now, for a card that's already established and proven itself in the market, I'm not sure how useful benchmarks and gameplay tests will be, but if something's worth doing, it's worth doing right, so I'm going to do those, but instead of at the start of the video where we usually put them, we'll put them at the end. Plus, of course, some overclocking stuff, because that's always fun too. But first off, the physicality. It's a real good looking card, guys, and in my rig, Devil's Crevice, for which I chose an MSI Z970M Gaming 5 motherboard that of course shares much of the same design language, it looks even better. Point of fact, actually, and some of you regulars will remember this, but when I was first building this machine, I was going to go with an MSI GTX 970 after hearing superb things about it, too. But sadly, the case I chose is unusually narrow, and MSI's heat pipe design stuck out just a few millimetres too far for me to be able to comfortably get the side panel on. And frankly, the same is true here with the GTX 960. The side panel will go on, but it kind of bows the glass window just a little bit, and I'm not terribly comfortable with that. But... Man, what a shame, because I don't know if any card I've ever slapped in here looks as good as this one does, all matched up with my motherboard and stuff. <laughs> Plus, MSI's approach to the glowing logo is one of the best I've seen. It's not too large and aggressive and obtrusive and such, but it's clean, it's bright, it's a little bit badass, and with a red backlighting effect to make it look just a little bit cooler still. The logo itself isn't RGB, which is a shame, but at least it's white, which means it won't clash with any other colour scheme you've got going on. And of course, you can make it flash or throb if you like. Now, at first I lamented the lack of a backplate. I do love me a nice clean backplate, as I'm sure many of you do too. But again, matching the motherboard to the card means the PCB itself even matches perfectly. So for the first time ever, I'm just fine not having a backplate there. MSI's Zero Frozor cooler design also stalls out the fans completely at low and moderate workloads, meaning the GTX 960 is utterly and completely silent for much of its life. And when the fans do spin up, well, this has to be one of, if not the, quietest GPU coolers I've ever come across. It is, for all practical purposes of the word, silent, all the way up to about 50% fan speed. And my usual close quarters microphone test will tell the story for you. So that's a comparative test against its own fan noise, but just to give you some perspective on how quiet even 100% is, here. So yeah, even at 100% it's not that loud, and the fan noise is kind of a pleasant hum, it's not a screeching whir and stuff like that. But that's kind of academic, because in real world use, even under an overclock, I never saw the fan ramp up past about 60%, which, as you just heard, is barely audible, even with a mic shoved up its heat pipes. And with the case closed, you may as well call it silent. The same is true of that bane of high-performance graphics cards, Coil Wine. Thank you. 
And although this is no shock considering the 900 series NVIDIA hardware is well known for being thermally well behaved, even under benchmarks, temperatures stay a very long way below any number of concern, hovering around the 65 degrees spot. And you may also notice there that 65 degrees is achieved at a fan speed of just 40%, which as we just saw, is in a very quiet neighbourhood. Benchmark score-wise, we see numbers that fall where you'd expect a good GTX 960 to sit. No shocks there. But, you know me, benchmarks are interesting at all, but it's gameplay that matters. And yes, people, by unending request from you guys, I've now got Witcher 3 in the mix here, complete with Jerry the Witchman's flowing NVIDIA physics hair. And on the 960, I found a custom mix of settings comprising various medium, high, and even a fistful of ultra settings got the game a nice balance of pretty and smooth, keeping me hovering between 45 and 60 FPS. A nice zone to be in for this kind of third-person single-player game, while keeping Jerry the Witchman and the world around him feeling alive and pleasant to look at. And yes, I'm never going to call him anything but Jerry the Witchman, because I love the way Witcher 3 fans twitch in their seats when you get that name wrong. <laughs> -la 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 -la. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> Tomb Raider Bench is slightly higher numbers, but here I could flick things up to Ultra without many compromises at all. And of course, in-game, things roll in liquid smooth and lovely. Now, under the finicky GTA V's graphics options, the only thing that forced me to make any compromises, really, was the memory on the card. While most of the graphical options can be wound up, keeping the game happy at the 2GB of GDR5 the GTX 960 here has means pulling back on things like population density and population variety a little bit. Nothing that actually hampers the look or gameplay in any meaningful way, it's just something to keep an eye on for memory-hungry games like GTA V. But as you can see for yourself, the 960 has zero issues keeping it slick and pretty with all the lovely lighting effects and such turned on, even in the rain and the thunder and the puddles and stuff. Alright then, so how about the latest Pixel Punishers? Well, Rise of the Doom Raider was actually much kinder to the GTX 960 than I'd anticipated. In fact, it looks bloody fantastic. I was even able to keep on pretty much all the pretty options. The texture quality setting was the only place I had to make any kind of conceit, and again, that's mainly because of the two gigabytes at play. That's just the physics of it. Fancier textures mean bigger files, and that takes more memory. It's amazing. If only Dad could have seen this. Here, got to get inside. Fallout 4 was another surprise. I had anticipated I'd plop down some high settings and it'd be okay, but. In point of fact, it punched the ultra settings right in the middle of its face. I had to turn the god rays down a couple of notches because, well, frankly I'm yet to find a graphics card that Fallout 4's god rays option doesn't kick frame rates in the dick with. Whatever they're doing with those god rays things, it's not very well optimised. And under those ultra settings, we can't quite peg that 60fps cap of Fallout 4's, but dips into the mid-40s aren't something I'd consider an issue for this game. But if you feel differently, it doesn't take much sacrifice to get it to peg up to 60fps and keep it there. So, finally, let's look at overclocking. A stock GTX 960 ticks in at 1127MHz and 1178 boost. Out of the box, the MSI Gaming 2 GOC edition comes with a 1216 MHz clock boosting to 1279 MHz. And I found a nice rock solid overclock for this particular card at 1407 base and 1470 MHz boost. 
and kicking the memory up another 500 notches to 75.10 MHz, all without touching core voltage at all, and all without making the card any louder. The card remained quiet as ever as it went from pinging in a fire strike score of 6019 under its factory overclock, to slamming home with a 6774 score under my fiddling, which is quite a nice free performance spike. And even here, temperatures never went past 67 degrees, still well in the arena of safe. And once more it bears repeating yet again, this was all while the card was virtually silent. Now, overclocking for some bigger numbers in a benchmark, again, is fun. But again, it's the in-game experience that I care about. And with my overclock in place, all other settings and things remaining equal, that overclock is just enough to give it a significant kick. For example, in Rise of the Tomb Raider, it can make up to about 10 frames per second difference, taking 50 frames per second all the way up to that desirable 60 frames per second, and for some people that's all the difference in the world. And considering the card is still running in a thermally comfortable place and without making any compromises at all on fan speeds and thus noise, it's hard to make an argument against not just leaving this overclock in place as standard. So, final verdict on the MSI Gaming 2G OC Edition card is this. Firstly, I'd underestimated the 960 bit in general, so I'm glad I've now added one to complete my NVIDIA GTX 900 series collection, and I'll be adding it to future videos where I do the thing where I compare the range of cards performance against a specific game. Those videos are always interesting to do, so it's nice to fill in the gap between the 950 and the 970. But secondly, big respect to MSI's cooler design. It's compact enough to keep it perfectly within the two-slot spacing, unlike some other coolers out there, which usually isn't a huge issue, but for some setups, it is vital. But absolutely a stunningly quiet cooler, which is one of those pretty vital details these days if, like me, you sometimes talk into a microphone while a game is being played, which more and more people are doing these days, of course. So having a silent graphics card has gone from something nice to have that makes the general experience a bit more pleasant to something that is absolutely workflow essential. So it makes me very happy when I come across a card as quiet as this one. So, if your budget can't quite reach that golden zone of a GTX 970, the MSI GTX 960 here is a damn fine choice. Powerful, ninja quiet, and a little bit kinder to your wallet, of course. So again, thanks to the NVIDIA Australia team and MSI for throwing one at me to check out. I'm very glad I did. What an impressive little card. But thanks for watching, I am Blunty, and we'll catch you next time.